Here are the best pre-built gaming PCs that you can buy in 2021 under $1,500. The first PC comes with the Intel i7 9700K CPU that comes at a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz, but a lot of people end up getting this thing up to 5.1 GHz overclocking fairly easily without the best CPU cooler. And if you know what you're doing with overclocking, there's a lot of people that end up getting this thing to a whopping 5.5 gigahertz which is absolutely insane for gaming but of course speeds that high are most likely going to require you to upgrade to a cpu liquid cooler the gpu in this is the nvidia rtx 2060 which is great for playing games at 1440p keep in mind that all games are different so the frame rate is just an estimation with what I'm about to say, but the RTX 2060 will get you roughly 60 to 80 frames per second at 1440p on ultra settings. Of course, smaller indie games or games that are just less GPU intense like Fortnite or Minecraft will have much higher frame rates than that. But if you tinker with the settings at 1440p and just lower some of the ultra options down to medium or high, then you can probably get right around 120 to 144 frames per second at 1440p, just not on ultra settings. If we talk about 1080p gaming, for people that care a lot more about frame rate than resolution, to be more competitive in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, or a game that I'm honestly super excited for to come to PC is Halo Infinite, then this is more than capable of running games at that resolution around 144 to 240 FPS. Of course, again, with PC, you need to mess around with the settings, but I do quickly want to say something to everybody watching this that is new to PC gaming. You will need a monitor that is capable of those frame rates if you plan to play games at those frame rates. Just check if your monitor is 60 hertz, 144 hertz, or 240 hertz before you end up buying it because not all monitors are the same and 90% of TVs are 60 hertz. So if that's what you have, look into getting a gaming monitor for PC gaming. I know most of you know this, but I still wanted to clear that up for people that are new to PC gaming. This also comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3000 megahertz, which is about 400 megahertz higher than your typical RAM. I was trying to figure out what motherboard this came with to see if it supports XMP, which is memory overclocking for those of you that are unaware, but I couldn't figure that out. So it, like if I take a wild guess, I would think that the components inside of this being newer, that it would end up having XMP to overclock the memory, but I cannot give a 100% answer on that. And in all honesty, most of you aren't going to be overclocking memory to begin with. And to be fair, it doesn't make that big of a difference. This also has a one terabyte SSD, which is a little bit unfortunate to see it not have an NVMe drive, which is the new norm in PC, but an SSD is still more than acceptable. For future reference, you may want to upgrade to an NVMe though, because they are ridiculously fast, especially if you invest into a higher end NVMe, like something like Samsung Evo, and not just cheaping out on a cheap $50 NVMe, expecting it to be the best. The second PC is the Dell G5. That is probably the best bang for your buck PC that you can buy with the current market. This is an Intel and Nvidia build as well, and it comes with the i7-9700K that comes at a base clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz. But again, there are a lot of people that get this up to 5.1 and even 5.5 gigahertz for more experienced overclockers. The GPU in this is again, the RTX 2060, which is great for 1440p gaming on ultra settings. With that said, again, the frame rate is gonna be hovering around 60 frames per second on ultra settings but that is more than enough to enjoy games if you plan on playing like easier to run games like minecraft fortnite dead cells hollow knight the messenger ukulele etc just smaller indie games and less graphical intense games then of course 1440p 144 hertz is possible but that is not going to happen in games like Call of Duty Warzone, Escape from Tarkov, GTA 5, and games like that. 
unless you mess around with the settings. Again, what I am saying right now is on ultra settings for 1440p. You're not going to be getting 144 frames per second at 1440p with ultra settings turned on. You're going to have to turn some of those down in order to get frame rates like that. But let's be completely honest, I would imagine that a lot of you watching this video are going to be expecting to play games at 1080p 144 hertz or 1080p 240 hertz, which this and the other ones that we go over in the video are more than capable of doing that. Honestly, what you get for what you pay with the Dell G5, this like build is extremely reasonable. With the current situation on things being so stupidly inflated and i do not think that this is going to be going away anytime soon if you look at the news this is just going to continue down the same path and stuff is just going to continue to rise in price anyways the dell g5 also has a 512 gigabyte nvme ssd drive which is the new norm for higher end computers and i can confirm that they do honestly make a massive difference compared to the normal SSD, which is why I said with the first computer, you may end up wanting to upgrade to an NVMe in the future, because they do make a really, really big difference, not only in gaming, but in all of the programs that you're running on your computer. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that's running at 2,660 megahertz. It comes with Windows 10, the RTX 2060 of course is VR capable for those of you that are looking to get into VR gaming. The size of this computer is extremely small. It isn't small enough to be considered a mini PC, but it's still a very convenient size and is going to fit very nicely in a gaming room for people that like the size of like the Xbox Series X or something. The dimensions on this computer are 14 inches tall, 7 inches wide, and 12 inches in depth. Just using my PC that you saw in the setup video the other day as a reference, my computer is 20 inches tall, 14 inches wide, and 16 inches in depth. So that's a humongous difference. The CPU cooler isn't just a typical CPU cooler either. It's a 360 degree directional fan that has four thermal mode options that can be set in the Alienware command center. Yes, you heard that correctly. For anybody that's getting into PC gaming, Dell is the maker of Alienware, so a lot of what you get with one of those computers that cost like four times the amount of money are going to be available here at a much lower price. The Alienware command center is great for gamers because you can input settings that stay for every single game without needing to adjust your mouse sensitivity to be or feel the exact same inside of different games, which honestly is a really big benefit. It's pretty annoying to mess around with your mouse settings in five different FPS games because it's always going to be different. The third PC on this list is another one from Skytech. This one is not under $1,500. I do want to, to make a note about that right now. So if you came here to only hear about those, then this is not going to be for you but it is still a killer deal on such a beefy freaking computer that will handle anything that you throw at it. Whether that being playing games and recording games at the exact same time, both in 4K, editing videos, etc. This thing is going to be more than capable of that. It comes with the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core CPU with a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost clock speed of 4.6 gigahertz. AMD CPUs, specifically the Ryzen 9, are extremely hard to overclock, much harder than Intel. So I honestly would leave this CPU alone. There are some people that get the base clock speed up to like 4.2 gigahertz but it's kind of pointless to be doing that when the boost clock speed is 4.6 gigahertz. If your computer needs that extra power, the CPU from the factory is going to give it that power to begin with. So there's not really any need to like overclock it to have a base clock speed of 4.2 when the boost clock speed is 4.6. 
you, I, I would imagine most of you that are newer to PC gaming can kind of understand what I'm saying here. The point of me saying that is like, if you buy a CPU from the factory that has a boost clock speed, most people that are overclocking their CPUs go past that boost clock speed because the CPU itself is going to boost it up to that speed if it needs that power. So overclocking means that you need to get a higher than that. But there's a lot of people that I, I think that you guys can understand. I don't, I don't want to confuse anybody, but regardless, my point being is that the AMD CPUs are much harder to overclock than Intel. So I would leave this alone. This comes with an RTX 3090 GPU that is capable of 4K 144Hz gaming without any issues whatsoever. Just remember to enable DLSS if that is what you want. If you plan on overclocking the RTX 3090, then you can of course play games at 4K 144Hz without DLSS turned on, but I would still recommend that just to save power in your computer, your electric bill and just keep your GPU cooler because of course that's going to cause your GPU to get very hot. This computer comes with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that's running at a whopping 3600 megahertz out of the box and the computer's motherboard does support XMP if you want to overclock your memory even though it doesn't really make that big of a difference. This has a one terabyte NVMe drive and it I don't care what anybody says, I know it's a Lian Mi ripoff, but the PC comes in one of the dopest cases, period, regardless if it's a ripoff. And it has some like crazy cooling as well. Honestly, dude, overall, if I didn't have a PC that was similar to this, then I would buy this in a heartbeat because the current market is so stupidly inflated and overpriced. So even though this is $4,200, which is a lot of money and I completely understand that. If you compare other computers that you're buying online to what this costs, most computers with similar specs to this are like near six grand. So this is a very good price for, you know, for this computer. But there are of course are cheaper options that are available if all you want is the case because i honestly do like the case the case is pretty cool but there are cheaper options if you just want a computer like this in this case anyways the links to all of these computers will be down in the description just like any of my top five top three top ten top six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve but anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video remember to leave a like if you did subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you guys in the next one peace